So today I'm here to tell you a little bit about what is the science center, uh, the activities that we do, the projects that we do, the people that, that actually do these projects, and um, yeah, and how can you actually collaborate with us, uh, and why should you do that? Um, so the science center is the national center for providing research software for uh, all academia in uh, the Netherlands. Um, our objective is actually to use digital technologies to advance science and to support societal change. And I think what many of the things that I will mention today will be complementary to what Serkan said and also the Dean. Um, so today researchers uh, are investigating more complex questions than ever, uh, from uh, climate change to smart cities to aging populations. Uh, and as uh, it, Serkan already mentioned, research is almost impossible without research software. Uh, and this is where the practices, the skills, the expertise that the eScience Center has uh, can play an important role. Um, so we are an ind independent foundation, but we are financed by the, both the Dutch Research Council, so NWO, uh, and uh, by SURF, uh, which is the, um, yeah, the compute infrastructure for all academic research in the Netherlands. Uh, we are around, we've been around for around 10 years, which is parallel to the term, I think, for research of engineer. Uh, and we've carried out projects in all domains that you can think of, uh, from earth observations to uh, yeah, high energy physics, astrophysics, uh, social sciences, digital histories, and more. Um, so our mission is to empower researchers across all disciplines through innovative research software, and we put this into practice in our two ambitions. So the first is to collaboratively design software for research, and the second is to build digital capacity in the uh, scientific community. And the instrument to achieve our first goal is uh, our open calls. So these are calls that we publish and uh, researchers from uh, all Dutch universities can apply for. Uh, and then we col can collaborate with you uh, on your research questions. Uh, and we provide uh, actually time. So research software engineers that will be able to collaborate with you and to, to answer your scientific question using the most advanced technology uh, that is available to us. Uh, so, um, these projects are driven by research questions and we apply state-of-the-art technologies uh, uh, to them in order to uh, solve these questions. And we develop, it's very important for us to put an emphasis of reusable and open software, data and knowledge, and on open science, as uh, Serkan mentioned as well. Uh, our second vision is to build digital expertise in the scientific community. And there are different ways to do that. So we uh, publish around 50 blog posts per year about the projects and the software uh, that we develop. We have uh, fellows that work with us. Uh, we provide trainings, uh, like uh, I, I put one example here, parallel programming in Python, but there are uh, different machine learning courses, uh, uh, domain-specific courses, and so on. Uh, and we are also part of different communities like uh, uh, NLRSE, and uh, where RSC stand for Research of Engineer or uh, other organizations. Uh, so everything uh, that we do actually depends on the excellence and the expertise of our Research of Engineers. So uh, these are uh, uh, academics, most have PhDs in different domains uh, that have strong affinity with the uh, technology. So they are able to understand both the scientific questions, but also the, the, the best uh, technological solution that we can offer uh, to solve these questions. And they come from different domains. Uh, as I mentioned, some are astronomers, like myself in, uh, in my education. Some come from uh, climate research. Uh, some come from digital history, like our director. And so our technical expertise spans from uh, artificial intelligence to analytics, data processing, computing, but overarching all of this is the software uh, quality, which actually can lead to software sustainability. And that means that the software we uh, create will be able to uh, be used for the future generation or a PhD after a, a student, a PhD student after the project has handed um, and so on. And it's also important for us to be part of communities that build a, a research software. And this way we can promise the, the long-term sustainability of the software. So now that you have a better understanding of what is the eScience Center, I can tell you a little bit about the activities that we do in the environment stability domains. So first of all, the, our section uh, spans quite a lot of uh, disciplines, uh, from climate uh, to earth observations, hydrology, ecology, and everything in between. And this is quite a large scope. Um, so every year we try to narrow it down to a couple of uh, uh, focal points, and we divide this into domain focus and technology focus. So in terms of domain focus, 
Uh, in, the, in, yeah, in 2023, we want to focus on three key pillars, uh, climate research, remote sensing, and geohealth. Uh, so first of all, we want to continue building our expertise in climate research. Um, so climate change is arguably the biggest challenge that we are facing today. Uh, and we have been collaborating a, uh, on the whole process of uh, climate research uh, with in, in the eScience Center along the years. So from modeling to implementation and deployment on computing infrastructure, uh, all the way to the analytics, uh, uh, to analysis of the data and the impact that it actually has. Uh, and we have created also a considerable network uh, in the climate uh, community, both in the Netherlands, but also uh, elsewhere in Europe. So uh, we foresee that we continue these focal points uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, one example of uh, an hydrology project uh, that we um, created to facilitate a fair and open hydrological modeling will be presented by, Pit by our own Peter Calverla today, uh, later on. And another very impactful uh, project that we have uh, is our uh, development and dissemination of Vision Valkur, which stands for the Earth, evaluation, Earth System Evaluation Model. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is a tool uh, that is widely used in the uh, European climate community, uh, and we think that it might be worthwhile to promote it in the Dutch community. So Sarah and Bauer will present it today. Now, given the demand from the scientific community, we have been developing expertise in remote sensing, uh, in data handling, in compute, in deployment and infrastructure. Um, and we want to establish ourselves as a hub of excellence for uh, earth observation and remote sensing. Um, so today, Prana, I think, will present the uh, RSTAT, which uh, stands for Remote Sensing Deployable Analysis Environment, which is a project where we have identified common challenges that the Earth observation community is facing, uh, and we created tools to uh, access, store, and analyze the data uh, on, uh, that are easily deployable on surf infrastructure. Um, another branch of uh, remote sensing is point cloud and uh, we have been developing expertise in that as well and merit will present a, a laser chicken which is a toolkit uh, to analyze laser point cloud data now we always want to find uh, some new emerging disciplines uh, uh, that we can contribute to and one such is geo health um, we want to uh, meet up with people from this community, maybe from here, uh, the GeoHealth community, uh, yeah, scientific uh, researchers uh, 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 from ITC, uh, and we want to see what are the challenges that they are facing and if we can develop in-house expertise in order to address these challenges. Um, now, in terms of technological focus, we want to focus on these three pillars the, uh, the yeah, next year or the next couple of years, on digital twins, on machine learning for geosciences, on, and on green computing. So first, digital twins, uh, more than buzzwords, uh, it's about Europe developing Earth uh, digital twin in order to simulate everything related to Earth, uh, to predict extreme weather events, for example, uh, and to see how we can advise policymakers about their climate policies, um, uh, what is the impact of different climate policies, etc. So in order to, for us to be able to contribute to these efforts, we are developing in-house expertise in multi-scale modeling, in uh, high-performance computing for um, climate research, in AI, in uh, data handling, and so on. Uh, and if uh, you are part of consortium that is applying for uh, a yeah, Horizon Europe project or an, any other initiative, we will be happy to hear from you if we can uh, help you or be part of this uh, collaboration. Now, uh, about machine learning for geosciences, uh, we, we figure out that all the projects that uh, we are currently working on uh, in environment stability and in geoscience have some kind of a machine learning component. But it's not that easy to use machine learning uh, methods on uh, geoscience data, um, and it requires some adaptation and some expertise. And we believe that the eScience Center uh, research software engineers are well positioned to offer this expertise. Uh, so uh, in addition uh, to uh, actually doing these projects, we also want to see if we can develop a, a tailored machine learning course that will uh, have use cases from uh, the environment stability uh, yeah, projects uh, and maybe develop it together with the SENSE graduate school, which is the school for uh, environment stability. And now finally, uh, as the environment and stability section, we see importance uh, in promoting clean computing. So engineers from uh, the eScience Center are working uh, in EasyWaste3, which is a, a yeah, European consortium, 
and they are um, accelerating weather simulations. And if there are opportunities that you see that we can collaborate with you on that, uh, we will be happy to as well. So finally, as I mentioned, uh, we do a lot of dissemination of the tools that we develop, of the projects, of the knowledge that we have. So this comes to uh, developing trainings. And I think uh, Francesco will present a data carpentry course today uh, that is tailored for uh, your community. Uh, it's called uh, Python analysis, I think, with, uh, yeah, sorry, geoscience uh, data analysis with Python, or on these lines. And um, uh, this is one thing that we do. Another thing is like mentoring fellows like Sirkan. Uh, we go present our tools in conferences. We do workshops. Uh, um, and if, if you find any opportunity that uh, we can help you with disseminating your tools, we will be happy to share our knowledge. Um, yes, I think most important that if you want to collaborate with us, we, uh, open, we publish an open call every year. I think it will be published at the beginning of next year. You can talk with Nils Drost, our uh, program manager. Um, and if there are other collaborations that, we, uh, that you think uh, we can work on with you, please don't hesitate to contact us. And yeah, that's it for me. If you have any questions, just shoot. <laughs> Questions from, from the audience? Yes, Rob. Uh, one of your comments was this uh, team of two Would this be fixed to yourself about Python being a bit in line with the programming language with like Swift and the other programming languages are slower than the other languages? How do you see this conflict? Yeah. So uh, to, to be honest, there are uh, yeah, different engineers who are trying to see, to examine uh, yeah, different uh, uh, programming languages and to see how, what is the resources that, that they are using. Uh, it's not like there is a bullet, uh, I think, yeah, a silver bullet that can solve this. So it's, yeah, uh, this is a thing that many people are working on currently. So I don't have the answer. Peter. Well, if I can just comment on that. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, indeed, and I think uh, you can also see some examples today uh, that will be presented today on using distributed computing like Rust. Um, but I think the, the, the question is more applicable to climate simulations, for example, and yeah, I, I think as a researcher, uh, yeah, we tend to use Python because it's very intuitive, uh, but yeah, we can also promote different languages in the community eventually. Okay, other, other questions? Maybe I can even comment on that eventually. Uh, yeah, there's Python, but uh, behind the curtains, actually, uh, usually we have C, C++, quite optimized. And partly that depends on uh, the, the users' um, users' capabilities to use uh, the, the packages and libraries. So eventually there are efficient ways to use existing software and there are inefficient ways to, to use it. So uh, that's why training activities um, may, may really play an important role. Um, and we are looking forward, actually, for uh, for your uh, the, uh, carpentry course, which includes information about it. Yes. Thank you very much again.